Okay, in this video, I'm going to discuss a question I'd say that a lot of people have because they're afraid of it, and it's what is an integral? So, before I start, the first thing to do is to show its symbol. So, this the symbol, if you're doing maths for an integral, is this S shape like that. Okay? So, for example, you might have... That would be the integral of the function f of x with respect to x. That's what that means. But we'll talk about that in a moment anyway. So that's its symbol. What does it do? Now, there's no re reason to be afraid of in an integral at all. Because, to be quite honest, it is quick way of adding. Okay? So, for example, let's say we have a graph and we're going to... So anybody doing applied maths might be familiar with this sort of graph, but you don't need to be. And on your graph you might have time and velocity. And say you had a curve that went like... Like that. Say that meant this is graphing the velocity of your car um, against time. So time, when you just start moving your car, it's at zero velocity. And as you put the accelerator down, your velocity speeds up. And for whatever reason, you may slow it down, and you speed up, you slow down, and you speed up like that. Now, anybody that does applied maths will know that when you graph velocity and time together, you'll get the, the uh, distance covered. That's what that will get. Now, you don't need to understand this. Just take it as a fact. I'm using this as an example to illustrate the point of integrals. So we'll be able to get a distance. So how would you get your total distance? You might, you get this point here, and you find out what that point is, and you get this point, and this, and this, and this, and you add them all up and you get your distance. The problem is, of course, that look, you're getting different points, and for each point, there's a space in between. So I'm not getting the, the distance at the space in between. So say I get even more points, like this, I'm still, there are still the spaces in between that. So what you do is, you integrate. An integral will give you the area underneath the curve. So it will give you everything continuously, like that. So the integral, the integral returns the area under a curve. That's what it does. It basically adds up the area of whatever graph or whatever shape you have. That's what an integral will do. And it'll do quicker than any other way you can do it. So, that's basically what an integral is. Now, like many other mathematical functions, it can be thought of in different ways depending on what you're doing it. So, the most basic way of describing an integral is it calculates the area underneath the curve. So, let's just look at another one. You might have a graph that goes like this. And you want to find the area of that graph. The area might mean something. If you're doing maths or physics, the area might actually mean something. But your integral will calculate all this area here and you'll, you'll get it back. So how does it do that? Say if you have a graph like this and say there's your graph. Well, there's, your, there's your function or your curve. Right? So you might have x and y. And say this graph is a function of x. So for every every y value depends on x. So we'll say y might be equal to, well it's not going to be 2x, but it might be, I don't know, I, I don't know what the shape of this curve. We'll just say it's 3x squared. So for every y value, say x is equal to 1, well then y would be equal to 3 times 1 squared is equal to 3. And you know the y position here is 3. So every x value gives a value of uh, 3x squared. So if you want to add up the area, that meant that would mean you have to go this x, this x, this x, and get the y value, and then the ones in between and get the y, y value, and the ones in between again, and that becomes tedious and inaccurate. So what people do instead is they'll do the following. They'll go, they'll use that integral sign, they'll have their function, and now you don't need to understand what I'm about to write now, but it's just, it's just part of an integral. 
and they'll do something like this and that'll give the entire area here everything perfectly very accurately so uh, that's what an integral does okay so what else can we tell you about an integral you should see that integ integrating integrating also this is like it this um, one sec now all lots of mathematical functions will do different things depending on how you use them so integrating is also adding now this symbol here scares everybody and it surely sc sure scared me when I was doing my leaving search this is Sigma and Sigma I have a video in regard to what, what uh, if look a video was what is capital Sigma what is capital Sigma. If you don't know what it is, check out that video. But you don't really need to know what capital Sigma is, except that it is is for adding. Capital Sigma is just a quick is instead of having plus plus plus, you just have one Sigma, and that's the end of that. So anyway, so Sigma will is just a, is is um is a function that will add up all loads of things. But to be honest, Sigma now these three lines means equivalent. equivalent to an integral. So summing is equivalent to integrating. So if you want to add loads of things together you will perform an integral. So so far we've seen that the, an integral will get you the area under the curve and it will also do addition for you very quickly. And finally, well not finally, I'm sure there are other uses that I'm not aware of, but another use that people use it for is the as it because it is the opposite of uh, it is the opposite of differentiation d i f e r e n t i a t i o n if you don't know what differentiation is i'd be very surprised because differentiation is usually done after learned after integration so it's the opposite of differentiation now, if you want to find out what differentiation is, look up my video on what is differentiation. But say we have a function y is a function of x. By the way, I suggest I have a video on what does uh, y equal f of x mean, or something like that. I can't remember what I've actually called it. Just check out that video. That's I think that's actually a very good video to look at. It's a uh, it, it's very helpful. But anyway. So say y is equal to a function of x, that's what that means, y is a function of x. So in order to get y you need to know x. So we'll say y is equal to 3x squared. If y is it a function of x? Well because if I say that x is equal to 1, therefore y is equal to 3, x is equal to 2, y is equal to 12. So in order to get y, you need to know x. That's what it means, y is a function of x. You could also say a is a function of b. So if b is equal to 1 and equal 3b squared, same thing, you're going to get b is equal to 1, a is equal to 3, b is equal to 2, a is equal to 12. It's basically the ingredients that make up your, your, your function. But anyway, so say if we have a function, y is a function of x, and it is equal to 3x squared, like this. Now, to mind I'm just going to differentiate this. I'm not going to tell you what differentiation is. You can look that up yourself. So y is, sorry, the way you write this would be dy dx, that's, okay, equals to um, 6x. Just take that for fact. If you understand it, that's great. If you don't, that's not very important. So dy dx is equal to 6x. So that is differentiated. Now, so that's going one way. However, if I integrate 6x, you don't need to understand what this dx is. You look up my video on how to integrate if you like. Is equal to 6 times x squared over 2 is equal to 3x squared. So basically by integrating something you get back, you, you go the opposite way for differentiating. Oh, that's the way I like to think about it. 
it's not, not necessarily correct. So if you're going one way with differentiating, then you're going the opposite way for integrating like that. So, so far we've seen that integrating is a quick way of adding. It is equivalent to capital sigma and it is the opposite to differentiation. So it will do all those different things for you depending on how you want them to be done. Now just can we think of an example, a real example. Now why, why, why are integrals actually done? Like in school they won't tell you, you'll, you'll learn all about integration and they won't ever tell you what they're used for. Now uh, I'm doing a, what is an integral, that's grand, I'm doing a course in physics in college and physics is all to do with forces and forces are represented like that. That's a vector, if you want you can check up my video on vectors if you want, but that's, it doesn't, it's, not, it's not an issue. But sometimes you will have a force acting on say, I don't know, we'll say uh, some sort of a body, we'll call it a house. And you want to know you might want to know what is the overall effect of the uh, of the force on the house or uh, how much work has been done or all of those things and you know something integrals do it very well because they will sum up the effect of the force all over what you're looking at so say for example if I want to if, if I have a force f of x if I integrate it across my whole house we'll say uh, we'll say that's how I how do that, kind of how I do that. These will give me my potential energy. So, like the the point really here is that you can you will the, your your integral here will apply this force to every part of this this house and or whatever body it is, and it will give you something back. It, it gives you something meaningful. In this case, it will give you potential energy. Now, you don't need to understand what potential energy is. What I'm trying to t show you is that integrals are, they give you something real. They really do give you something real. They give you things like work. They give you energy. They give you um, potential energy, like I said. They add things up for you. They do the opposite of differentiation. They do loads of different things. So they're very, very useful. And while in school, you may be only learning how to physically do an integral and not use one, I can guarantee you that if you do maths, Applied maths, physics, engineering, any type of engineering, um, chemistry, any of these things, you will be using integrals all the time. And they will mean something. They will mean something. So being able to do them is probably the easy part. If you know how to use them, that's the hard part, and that's what they'll do in college. So integrals aren't something in, in pie in the sky, airy fairy. They're very good. They uh, they will they will compute lots of things, different things to you very quickly. And to be honest, integration isn't that difficult. There are lots of different ways of doing it, but integration actually is not that difficult. So look, I hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions or comments, please put them on. Uh, uh, just put them on a comment in my video here. Thanks for watching. Please pass this video on to your friends, and please subscribe to my channel.